but my bike is overheating. What we do is we we dry them out for the next day's ride. The worst case scenario, we can have a slight warp in the head or something. morning ritual packing up gotta make some room for my computer here heading to the next country goodbye copenhagen and denmark hello sweden i hope to be in stockholm tonight this time i'm not alone for the past month or so i've been riding with my good buddy johnny a he's on his 1150gs so far we've ridden iceland the faroe islands denmark now sweden and norway heading all the way to the top of europe to nordkop Hey, click the subscribe button. You want to join this ride. Let's just hope the weather is good to us. You know, frankly, I don't know where I am other than I'm in Sweden. I'm on the side of the road along a freeway. I always like that word, freeway. Here in Sweden, I'd rather be on the back roads, but my bike is overheating. For a while, if I just kept speed, cruising at 60, 70 miles per hour, about 100, 110 kilometers per hour, the wind and the speed would keep the engine cool. But just in the last, say, five miles, the bike won't cool down. Warning light for the overheating is staying on, indicating that this engine is way too hot. Johnny A's taking a break over here. And we're simply hoping that maybe give it some rest. We get up the road a bit, I can take these panels off, I can look and see if there's any fluid in the cooling system. I've not seen any indication since I've been here that there is no fuel, there's been no overflowing. So we've got to we gotta take the bike apart and take a look. I can't do anything until it's cool. Okay, so here I am in Astorp. Astorp. Uh, Astorp in Sweden, we're in the southern city in Scandia. Yes, Scandia? South, Sweden. Okay, so anyway, we are here. Um, the, the bike has been overheating. I, um, I found these guys actually at a local pizza, bar, pizza parlor and bar last night. They were able to find somebody with the trailer. And we are um, going to get on the road to Anglesorp to see if we can't get the uh, heating problem fixed. Johnny A's over here. He's going to follow us. John, how, how's everything come together this morning so far? So far, so good. I didn't think they were going to get this bike on this little mini trailer here, but the sides pulled down. Yep, the front and the back folds down, and, and it seemed like no problem. They have some mega straps here. The dock seems pretty secure on there. Yeah. We have Osama back here, who uh, is the owner of the, uh, the Milano Hotel, and uh, let us camp on his grounds last night. This is Osama. Say hello. Hello. How are you? Oh, these I, guys. I hope it will go very fo good for uh, my my friend. Uh, what's your Alan. Name? Alan. Yeah. Alan. And I hope we see I see you in America. Maybe I see you come someday. visit me in America. Yes, yeah, absolutely. I hope so. His I, daughter, 15-year-old daughter, is like the Scandinavian uh, Tai Chi champion. We saw her fight a little bit today. He's got a wonderful family. Uh, Thank his you. His wife, Fa Fa Fadwa. Fadwa. <laughs> Fadwa. And um, we're we're very excited. And then these guys. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. Okay, what's your name again? Connie. 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 And Michael. 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 And Michael um, are helping me get this to the BMW dealer. We hope that they're going to be able to fix this thing. I am very excited. Thank you, guys. This is this is a, an amazing treat. We wish you good luck. Yeah. Uh, okay. We wish good luck to you. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank maybe, you. Maybe, okay, maybe, bye bye. Maybe you're coming back uh, <laughs> when you're coming from Finland. <laughs> yeah, you may. There you go. <laughs> we will see you, very, that's right. Yeah. Thank you. All right, so I'm sitting here at uh, Garrett's BMW dealer in uh, Angelsholm. Sweden, 20 kilometers from where we slept last night. Uh, they're telling me right now that they've got only two mechanics on duty because it's vacation time. Uh, they're not going to get to look to my uh, motorcycle till early this afternoon. At that point, they say if they need to get parts, parts will come from Malmo uh, an hour from here. We went through there on the way back from 
Copenhagen, uh, hoping that it's a simple thing, that they can get it, they can get the parts, and we can be on our road. We still have a uh, reservation for tonight in Stockholm. I'm, I'm going to hold that till as long as I can. It's kind of a bum, but uh, we had an interesting evening last night. Uh, everybody's on vacation, so they're in a party mood here in Sweden. And uh, I guess one of the things we learned, the Swedes don't go out on a weeknight when they're working and have a um, cocktail or a bottle of wine, typically. They're, oh, if they are, they're looked at with a poo-poo, as my friend, you go and, he would hold his head up, hand up to his, uh, to his head, and he'd go, what was his name, man? The guy, the cool guy, the, uh, the guy last night who would go, Tommy. Tommy. His name was Tommy. He was a piece of work. Unfortunately, when I went back there, we didn't get a, get a chance to take his picture, but we've got the crew, and we're um, hoping things are going to work out. I'm here with Mats and Andros, Anna, and what's your name? Michael. And Michael, here at Gertz BMW in uh, Angelhorn, Angelholm, Angelholm, uh, Sweden, and I'm with Doc. We've been overheating, as you know, and it's been um, a bit of a puzzle to try to figure this out. But uh, but what we think has happened is that that somewhere in the service in the last few months, a, a hose got crimped and therefore was. Uh, pinched basically and not letting the water flow through the uh, the radiator which is really strange of course I was in uh, Iceland for a long time now it's so damn cold in Iceland maybe my engine didn't get, <laughs> didn't get hot enough but I would I would argue that can't be true so so what was it just recently that might have um, caused this I, I, I would have never been able to figure this out I did check the level of the radiator yesterday finding the uh, at least the, the overflow uh, container was just a tad low but in reality that's the only water that was there and it wasn't getting circulating through the engine it was sitting in the radiator and not going uh, through the engine to cool it um, could you explain that all in Swedish slangen till från expansion kärlet till kylorna hade kommit i kläm så då kan inte när det blir varmt så kan ju inte den hämta vatten från expansion kärlet all kylning så sker den förbrukar alltid lite vatten och försvinner alltid någonstans så det blir tomt i resten av systemet. This is very easy for him to say. Yeah. <laughs> Because I'm from Sweden. So it would be. <laughs> it would be. So that's the, the problem here in Swedish and I think what we're going to do is we're going to just re uh, you know, flush the system, put new fluid in and, and hopefully I'll be on the road. Thank so. Thank so. I don't know where our, our, our mechanic, Andrus, He went for a coffee break. Ah, of course. Andres went for a coffee he didn't break. He want to be in the movie. He, he definitely got shy, I think, at the time the camera came out. <laughs> the, the plan is now to just let it sit here when cool. he has his coffee break, cool down a bit, and then he will start it up with more uh, Water. coolant. Yep. That's basically it. Okay. Then, uh, then you should be fit for fight again. This is what I was hoping for, something simple as opposed yeah. to an expensive part. You can have, a, uh, if you have a really bad luck, you can have a blown gasket in the engine, but that can take a while to... So even though... We it, don't think so, but you don't, in a worst case scenario, that, that can happen. If it's overheated, if the cylinder head has warped or the gasket has been blown, that can show. But you just check the engine temp and check the coolant as we have taught you now then it should not be any problem hopefully hopefully, hopefully you not. feel it's good but okay it goes to work and it's really hot we had it here to working temperature and with the computer we started the fans the fans of it uh, everything works as it should as it should okay yes. good so the fan is working at, yeah yep everything is working fine now but worst case scenario we can have a slight warp in the head or something that would Show up later. Show up later, like in Stockholm? Yeah. How many miles would it show up? I don't or kilometers? I can't tell. Don't know. That. It's depend on how hard you ride it, how... But okay. uh, probably not. But probably not. Well, we call fingers crossed. Thank you. Okay, here we are, Gertz, uh, BMW, Angelholm in Sweden, Doc. Not as bad as we thought, as long as we don't have a uh, blown head gasket or a warped cylinder head. We're at the Radisson. At the Radisson in Stockholm. No, we're at the Radisson Green. Radisson Green, no, blue. It's blue. It's blue. It's blue. <laughs> we're at blue.
and uh, we're here. We got a, we got a view. We can't show you right now because it's dark out for the first time in about freaking three weeks. Yeah. It finally is starting to get dark now. Yeah. Uh, as we near August first, soon to be August first. We're, we're at August twenty fifth here. It seems to be, and then we're no, July. Oh, uh, July. Yeah, July. Oh. And there is some foam on the streets of Stockholm, New Haven, due to. Some heavy rains that happened today on our ride in from yeah, Angle home. Yeah, we, we, we couldn't believe the power of the rain. I mean, the rains, the, the roads looked like they were foam, like a bubble bath. There was, there was at least this much water on the streets. In some areas, there was this much water on average. And as trucks drove rapidly by us oh to get to God. their destination before their five o'clock deadline they had, we were cruising along at reasonable, careful speeds due to the treacherous highway conditions. With oil slipperiness. And we were, I was watching world rider Alan Carl getting splashed I from the giant truck, they, they, tractor they, they, trailer drive huge tires that waves. were just shooting waves of water all over oh. the side of World Riders BMW I mean, gear. It was like they were like just and toasting me. From what I hear, the, the BMW gear held up quite well. But how long can this kind of gear hold up is what I want to know. Yeah, I mean, and what I want to know right now is when is BMW going to come up with another set of a gear for this man who's who, who's riding over hill and dale and and adventuring on into the uh, onto the beyond and the and the unknown to 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 find out life secrets and mysteries and unravel the beauty of of of, of human connection with with other cultures and the man needs a good suit to do this in i mean his suit was was it was was Drenched in, 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 in oil and, and road debris and water from the gods above. Here, here, bring the camera over here so we can show them where we're drying it out. We've got the right tools. We've got the right tools to, to dry things right, out here. Right, right. Radis, unfortunately, we're not staying in one of those rinky dink places. Here we've got, we, we have to use. I these. mean, these are Gore Tex BMW good. We dry them out for the next day's ride. We gotta continue on down the road. Oslo and Norway and on up to Nordcap. And we need decent gloves that, you know, don't get your hands all wrinkled, your fingertips all wrinkled. Fortunately, this is kind of a nice place they offered us. The hair dryer, which, which is something I usually don't need. Well, here we've got, feel these. We've got Patty and Howdy coming along. Oh, they're doing nicely oh, on their own without the dryer. And, Good. And, and here is the BMW suit, you know, that was so graciously gifted to World Rider uh, as a sponsorship thing. Um, and this this thing, if you could see how heavy this, I, I, can't, <laughs> I can't show you how heavy this thing is, but right now, like, it, I want to tell it, you. Is it wet still? It's very wet. It's wet deep inside. So I don't know how we're gonna get that dry inside other than we're using the hair dryer. I mean, there's no other alternative. You can't put this in a dryer at the laundromat. So we're gonna have to do, we're gonna have to come up with some other uh, an alternative. I mean, it is soaking right here. I mean, I could almost, look, there's moisture on my fingertips just from touching. John, can you explain a little bit about the rain you, you, you rode through today? If, I, if it was up to me, I probably would have pulled over at the nearest uh, gas station. Dunkin' Donuts. And, and hung out underneath the thing and just said, call it a day, you know. But Alan Carl, World Rider, the, guy's, the guy is like, I don't know, what, I don't, what can I say about it? What can I say about him? He just wanted to keep going into it. He was like, this is where the adventure begins, he says to me. And I'm like, are you freaking... Yeah, are you kidding me? I'm pushing 60. I don't know how old you are, World Rider. I'm pushing 60. I'm going to go ride into this nightmare risk the rest of my few days I've got left on the planet. Well, what could I do? What could I say? He kept going. He's the guy with the GPS, the high-tech equipment, the, 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 the maps program. The, he's got all the directions, where we're going, where we're headed, where we came from. He's got the computer updates and the, and the blog outputs. And 
So what am I going to do? Sitting on the side of the road by myself? So here I am at this modest hotel. Here, here, here in, we're, we're, in, waiting for, uh, we're waiting for room service to come up here and get us a, maybe a plate of french fries or <laughs> yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm famished. I mean, I, 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 so anything will do right now. At this point, I could go for a cold beer, even if it was a Heineken. And I know Heineken's not from Sweden, but I'll settle for a Heineken. And I know Dennis Hopper. What kind of beer do you like? Heineken. I love Dennis Hopper. He's always said, Heineken? Fuck that shit! Paps Blue Ribbon! Fuck Heineken! Paps Blue Ribbon! But let me tell you, if you can show me a Paps Blue Ribbon in Stockholm, Sweden, well, I'll show you a $20 bill on the floor. So, US. What? Johnny, thanks for the commentary, man. You have fucking un. Veiled the secret to adventure riding in Stockholm. I'm done with this adventure. I'm going home. We finally got a proper cold beer and Johnny A warmed up to Stockholm and Sweden. Of course, a nice meal and a good wine served by a Swedish beauty couldn't hurt, right? But we spent a couple days exploring Stockholm, seeing the sights, eating more good food. And we even found a, a couple stickers of the flag of Sweden, which we applied to our panniers before crossing the border into Norway. We've got quite a ways to go until we get to the very top of the European continent, at least as far as we can ride these bikes, Nordkop. So hit the subscribe button there and join us as our adventures continue all over the world. So I'll see you on the next ride, and thanks for subscribing. This is Alan. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my channel.